Hi folks, Chris Martin here. Today we're going to talk about five steps to winning diplomacy. Should be easy, right? Over on PlayDiplomacy.com, uh, Zosimus posted the following. I thought we'd take a look at it and break it down. Step one, have a workable plan. Step two, sell one or more allies on that plan. Step three, implement the plan. Step four, refine the plan. And step five, repeat. If you aren't winning at diplomacy, he argues you need to identify and improve your weaknesses in one of those steps. So if your plans suck, you need to get better plans. If your hoped for allies end up allied against you, become more persuasive. If you fail to implement your plan, learn better tactics. And if you stick with a plan too long, learn to adapt. Broadly speaking, I agree with this five-step outline. As advice for improving, however, I think there's a lot more to be said. What exactly constitutes a workable plan? How can you become more persuasive? How do you improve your tactics? And how do you know when it's time to adapt your current plan or abandon it entirely and move to a new one? When I give advice to new players who want to improve their game, I actually start them off on step three. Implement the plan, or, or rather, the part of step three which is about getting better, which is learn better tactics. Diplomacy is a very complicated game on one level, but on another level, moving the pieces is not that complicated. There aren't a lot of rules. You don't have to look up the things in charts. You don't have to keep a lot of things in your head. But you do really have to have a mastery of the way the pieces move. And if you have that, then other doors will open up for you. It's very hard as a person to become a better negotiator if you're not a good negotiator already. And it's hard to know what a workable plan is if you haven't played a lot of diplomacy and, and have a sense of where you want your pieces to go. But there is something that you can do as a newer player to become a better tactician that doesn't actually take a lot of time compared to these other things. And that is to play a lot of gunboat diplomacy. Gunboat diplomacy is diplomacy without any negotiations. No press, no face-to-face -face conversations. You just move pieces on the board. Now, you can send a message with your orders. We'll talk about that maybe a little bit later on. But the idea is that you strip away the fun bits of diplomacy, which is the negotiations and the persuasion, to really drill down into how to move the pieces. And if you're having problems with tactics, if you're finding that your attacks are being parried and your defenses are being broken down, then maybe you need to do some drills. Gunboat means you have to make your own plans, analyze what you think the other player is going to do, and come up with the best set of orders to counter their moves and advance your position. If you survive the opening game, and there's no amount of skill that's going to help you if three of your neighbors decide to just come after you, then you get to the mid game, and you have to find a way to coordinate with other players using only the pieces on the board to signal what moves you want to have. Then you have to get to the end game, and in the end game you've got to either figure out how to set up a stalemate line without being able to talk about it, or to break through a stalemate line that's attempting to be set up and get the victory. All of this helps you focus on the tactical moving of pieces on the board. In our example today, we're going to be playing Russia. It's the fall of 1903. The position isn't bad. Armies in Galicia, Ukraine, and Romania with the fleet in Sev. You own Sweden, you've got a fleet there. Livonia is kind of acting as a, a safeguard, playing a little home defense, not on offense, um, just kind of discouraging anyone from running in on you. I'm not a big fan of that in gunboat, but okay. You'll notice that Bulgaria is owned by Turkey, but occupied by Austria. And Denmark, similarly, is owned by Germany, but occupied by England. Based purely on the board state, 
what's your plan? What do you want to have happen now? And then what do you want to have happen next? So we're going to focus on today. I think a lot of newer players say, well, what's the dot that I can swing at? And uh, sure, you want to own a lot of dots at the end of the game, 18 ideally. So let's go ahead and start taking a look at that. The center that you can make a supported attack on is Budapest. And you can either have Galicia move with Romania support. I'll set that up. And Romania supports that. Or you could have Romania move and Galicia support it. So let's break it down. Which one is better and why? Let's start out by having Romania be the mover. Let's just look how that works. So Romania is moving. Galicia is supporting that move there. Now, if Romania is getting out of the way, Ukraine moves down to Romania, and that's good. Sev is either going to move to the Black Sea or support the move to Romania. Okay, so that's how that's going to work. We're going to focus on the Balkans here. If we go in the other direction and we have Galicia move with Romania supporting that, then Ukraine can either go to Galicia to follow up to keep the pressure on. Ukraine can support Romania to hold. Uh, Sev can also move to the Black Sea or support Romania to hold, depending on what we have Ukraine do. That's basically the tactical choices that you have for that attack. That's pretty simple. And that's, you know, the elegance of diplomacy is that those are your choices if you're going to make that attack. There's not a lot of complicated decisions to make until you start to ask yourself, well, which one of these is better and why? In order to figure that out, you have to look at the other players and what are they thinking about and what is it that they want to accomplish. So let's do that. Austria is in an interesting spot. They've gained Bulgaria in the spring turn. If they hold in the fall, they'll have a build. But they don't have a home center available to build in. So they've got to clear one of their home centers for a build. Unfortunately, Italy has a supported attack on Trieste, and Russia has a supported attack on Budapest. Vienna can only support one of them. So if both Italy and Russia attack, Austria is going to lose one of them. There's nothing that they can do about that. Well, if all of the attacks are written correctly. So think about this. In the south, Greece supports Bulgaria to hold, right? Well, maybe. Uh, certainly, that guarantees that Austria does not lose Bulgaria, assuming that Russia doesn't support Turkey back in. Well, what's Turkey going to do here? Turkey has an Italian fleet off the coast of Smyrna. If they defend Smyrna, they cannot retake Bulgaria if Austria supports it. It's gunboat, so you don't know what anyone else is going to do, and you can't talk to them. So maybe Austria decides, hey, there's no way that Turkey doesn't defend Smyrna. I don't have to support Bulgaria. I could use Bulgaria to move to Romania. Why would Austria do that? Austria might be gambling that Romania is going to support Galicia to Budapest. Like that. Okay. If Bulgaria cuts that support, Budapest can sneak into Serbia, and Vienna can go to Galicia. Trieste can go to Budapest. What's that going to accomplish? Well, in this set of orders, this support is cut, Budapest goes down to Serbia, that means Galicia bounces with Trieste, and Budapest is open and free for a build. On the other hand, if Galicia supports Romania in, you get the same result, in which now Vienna is cutting Galicia's support, and Romania bounces with Trieste, and Austria succeeds in arriving in Serbia, and Budapest is free for the build. That's great, unless, of course, uh, Italy goes ahead and takes Trieste, in which case, oh, what are you going to do? You're going to lose something, so you're going to gamble one way or the other. Now, obviously, neither of those results are great for us. Uh, neither attack 
on Budapest will work. It doesn't matter how we run it. We're not going to get in if Austria makes that choice on defense. But actually, it's worse than that. Because look, if Bulgaria isn't going to be attacked, Bulgaria can support Budapest to Romania. Vienna can go to Budapest, and Trieste can go to Serbia. Think about that set of orders for a minute. If you're Austria, what are the odds that Russia or Italy is just going to nakedly move to Vienna? Okay, uh, low, I would say. There's no supported attack there. Vienna has probably got a good support. You know, uh, Vienna could also gamble and, and go to Trieste. But I think that the absence of a fleet in the Adriatic means that if Austria has to guess who to trust, he's going to trust that Italy isn't going to swing at Trieste. This is the way that I'm going to lean right now. Well, what happens in this set of moves, sorry, let's go this way again, and let's look at what some of our proposed order sets were. Galicia to Budapest, Romania supports Galicia to Budapest. Now, right now, what happens is Budapest arrives in Romania and Galicia bounces with Vienna, and Austria gains Romania gains Bulgaria, and has both Budapest and Trieste open to build in. So that would be bad for us. If Ukraine moved to Galicia and Sev moved to the Black Sea, which was one of the things we had on the table there, this is a disaster for you as Russia. This is really bad. Now, you may say this is a low probability, but you got to at least work through the chances. You can mitigate that by having Sev support Romania to hold or by keeping going to the Black Sea, which I think we want to do, Ukraine supporting Romania to hold. In this scenario, you still don't, you're going to get into Budapest now, because Budapest isn't dislodging Romania. You can't cut support for an attack on yourself, right? It's one of the fundamental rules of the game. So Romania's support here is good because it isn't dislodged. That means Two on one, you arrive in Budapest, Trieste gets to Serbia, but Budapest is dislodged, has to retreat to Trieste. So if you're going to gamble in one way or the other, you want to make sure that you're not running the risk of disaster by leaving a, a key unit unsupported. Let's flip it around, look at the other way. Romania to Budapest, Galicia supports Romania to Budapest. Here, uh, you're just going to get a brace. Here, you're moving this way. Um, Galicia support is going to be bounced. Budapest is going to stay. Trieste will get to Serbia, and he'll have the center open for a build, but at least you will not be losing Romania. The point I'm trying to make here, and this may be painfully obvious, but it is that your best tactics depend upon what you think they are going to do. And you have to consider not just what you think they're going to do, but what they might do. If you don't consider all of the possible attack defense combinations before you make your decision, you could find yourself just being punked by somebody who thinks one step ahead of you. Now, in gunboat, you can't negotiate with other players. In, in, a, in a real game where you were talking to folks, whether by email or face-to-face, -face, you'd have a read on how Austria is going to do this. In gunboat, all you have is the game history. Well, the game history makes a big difference. You should be looking at what people did to try and figure out what they might do. And if you understand how the board got to this position, you think about it that way, well, that can influence your choices. So let's go ahead and load up uh, the spring turn of 1903. Okay, there's a lot going on here. We're not going to be able to just stay focused on the Balkans, but let's start here. You see that Austria captured Bulgaria because we supported them in. That's good to know. They also ran a three-way support here at home, and I'll put the orders up on the side here, and you'll see that if we had attacked and Italy had attacked, uh, Italy would have taken Trieste. Instead, Italy rolls in on Turkey and defends against a potential French attack. And look at this French set of orders. Don't do that. Come on. I can't even, I can't even get started. Okay, so does this give us some insight into what Austria might be thinking this turn. Well, we're the ones who helped them in, so maybe they're thinking favorably about us. That's good to know. And why did we help them? Okay, uh, you want to 
create problems for your enemies and opportunities for your friends and ideally sow confusion. Let's look at the bigger board here. Surely we expected to lose Sweden, right? With, with the two English units there. And we signaled, hey, England, let's work together against Germany by supporting them into Denmark. And lo and behold, uh, Germany must have just slapped that fleet down because England didn't like it and took Denmark. That's great for us. We're probably going to hold Sweden for the foreseeable future. And maybe that's what Moscow going to Livonia was about as well, signaling to England, hey, I'm not coming up here to contest Scandinavia. I'm going to send this unit through to kind of move against Germany. Although, you know, why you don't build it in Warsaw? Probably you don't build it in Warsaw because you don't know. And Germany just built that fleet. And so now you have this opportunity. However we got there, we got there. Okay. Having Austria with a lot of armies in the middle is not going to be great for us in the long term. But if they have to contest in the Balkans down here and they're friendly to us and Italy is also fighting Turkey and we have some opportunity in Germany, maybe that's okay for us. Let's play through that. Maybe, since we think that the attack on Budapest probably isn't going to work, we go ahead and switch gears and go full on, let's help England, let's go after Germany. What would that look like? So we would go Livonia to Prussia, Galicia to Silesia, keep going to the Black Sea, maybe just support Romania to hold here. And we can then use Romania and Sweden to signal. Sweden supports Denmark to hold, and Romania can support, you know, something like uh, Greece to Smyrna, or Tyrolia to Munich, or, you know, Wales to Munich, or even Livonia to Berlin. Right, something to, to the, the you can use this to indicate something that you want to happen. You don't want to actually write that order. So you're sending a signal with a unit that is otherwise unoccupied, and that's one of the ways that you negotiate in gunboat. Don't worry too much about that. We're focused on tactics here. So I think that a lot of sort of intermediate level players, not beginners, but not advanced players, are going to get to this. They're going to say, okay. I'm helping Austria because I want to hurt Turkey. Italy is getting invested there. Hey, Italy may attack Austria, in which case he has to focus on him. I'm going to take this chance to go run in on Germany. And I think that would be a mistake. Let's look at why. The problem with attacking Germany from this position is that it might work in the very short term, right? Austria gets on board, clears Trieste, builds a fleet, engages in the south. England. Uh, takes advantage of the fact that uh, France has held on, not moved, again, don't get me started, gets a couple of more German centers, you get Berlin. What do you do then? You're going to fight Austria then? Austria, hopefully, you know, if they're good enough to write these orders, has had some success. Maybe they've taken Venice. Maybe they've taken Constantinople. Um, you're going to get one more unit on the table. And in order to win as Russia, you got to have success in the north or you got to have success in the south. And you got to have the middle solid. Having a huge Austria who has nothing but a bunch of armies, they're going to roll into your position later. Uh, it's probably not going to work. Maybe there are a lot of uh, reasons why you might make that choice in a press game where Austria is a, a really great ally that you feel like you can work with in the medium term and, and maybe get the leg up on them later. But in a gunboat game, I would say that your path to victory from there is very, very narrow. Which means what? Well, that means I think that we're back to attacking Austria somehow. I don't really see any other options. So one last look. How do we make that work? In a press game, you might support Turkey back in, right? You might talk Turkey into supporting you into Bulgaria which is interesting if you think about it from Turkey's point of view. Um, you'd have to really be a good salesman to pull that off. But hey, if he's losing Bulgaria anyway, wouldn't he rather have you and Austria fighting than you and Austria working together? Something to think about. Anyway, from this position here, if I've got to make a choice, I think I like Galicia going to Budapest with Romania supporting that and Ukraine supporting Romania to hold while you keep hitting the Black Sea. Why? Why is that the choice that I'm going to come down to? You got to fight Austria now. You're in theater with armies. They're growing. Now you set them up for that growth. Then you're trimming Turkey back now. If you can get Turkey to go back and Austria to not grow, that's great. Ideally, 
Italy is going to force the Aegean here, or possibly even force the Aegean this way, right? Setting up for an attack on Greece while and at the same time supporting the attack there. So if we do this, then there is really nothing that Austria can do it short of being psychic, right? The perfect defense here then is Greece to Bulgaria, Bulgaria to Romania, Vienna supports Trieste to hold, right? And Budapest supports that. Uh, but guess what? Austria still doesn't have a home center free to build in, right? And he probably doesn't even do this because if this move succeeds, I just retreat to Serbia. So, I mean, there's there's really no good set of orders for Austria here. What you have to gamble on in this situation is that Italy is going to make the attack. If they don't, okay. If they do, you're in good shape. And if Austria takes the really aggressive path of attacking you after you've supported them in, yeah, you know, you're probably going to be in pretty good shape. But my money here is on something a lot more like Greece supporting Bulgaria to hold, Bulgaria supporting you to hold as a signal, right? Um, Budapest walking to Serbia and Vienna supporting Trieste to hold, you know? And maybe there's some sort of uh, other option there with a bounce in the home center. But I figure this gives you the best odds of getting into Budapest, preventing Austria from building, and moving to the next stage of the game where you're going to get a build and you're going to be able to do something with it. Now, sure. Livonia is going to go to Prussia here. Whoops, no, Vienna's not going to go there. Let's say we're supporting Tristold. Livonia is going to go to Prussia. Sweden's going to support Denmark to hold. And then you think, okay, where's my game go next? Maybe I just slap down another army in Warsaw if I'm lucky enough to get in, because now I got a backfill. Because then, then now you got a game. You got a place that you can go. Turkey is weak. Maybe Italy got a build. He's not going to be threatening you for these centers, right? He's going to put down another fleet, probably. He'll get Greece. You'll get Vienna, you'll get Budapest, eventually you'll get the Black Sea, and then, as Russia, you've got an end game. These are the kinds of things you think about. Yeah, okay, the tactics over this, pretty simple, but like, how do you get to the right order set? That's a lot bigger question. I think we've beaten this example to death. But here's the thing. I've talked to a lot of experienced diplomacy players, and a good face-to-face -face diplomacy player is going to come to this conclusion in about 30 to 45 seconds. They might be figuring it out as the spring orders are being read. What are they going to see? They're going to see, okay, Turkey going backwards is good. Austria growing is bad. Italy's going to need to grow, so they're probably going to make that attack. I don't want to run the risk of losing Romania, so i got to support it. I don't want to let Turkey into the Black Sea, so i got to keep bouncing that. Uh, definitely keep working with England. Okay, boom, 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 boom. Oh, I've got to move from Galicia. Hey, maybe that'll work out for Italy and not for me. Maybe Vienna supports Budapest to hold and Trieste goes to Serbia. But either way, my position isn't going to go backwards, and maybe it's going to go forwards. You see this kind of thing when you hear expert poker players talking about the feel of a hand. right? They've played so many hands, they've seen the same situation so many times, that they have a sense of how things are going to go. And that's what allows them to bluff or call or make the read. That's what you've got to do. That's the sense you have to develop to be better at the tactics of diplomacy. The reason I picked this example is that there's a lot going on here. You can't just look at what are my best set of orders and get to the right conclusion without thinking it through, which is to say you can do that and it might happen, but more often than not, um, it won't. In a press game, maybe you don't end up attacking Austria. Lots of good reasons for working with Austria as Russia. It's a great alliance if you can make it work. But absence that information, the noise, the, the, the conversations that you have, uh, gunboat diplomacy gives you the opportunity to separate all that out and just focus on moving the pieces. Don't get too hung up on whether you win or lose at gunboat diplomacy. It doesn't actually have a lot of bearing on, on whether you're really good at the game itself. Um, it just means you're good at pushing pieces and you got lucky because other people pushed pieces into your enemies at the right time. Let's bring it back to the five steps that Zosima suggested at the beginning of the video. Step one, have a workable plan. Step two, sell one or more allies on that plan. Step three, implement that plan. Four, refine the plan. And five, repeat until you win. 
Today we talked about implementing the plan. How do you improve that? I talked you through sort of my analysis of the position. If you've got another analysis, you've got some other way you're thinking about it, please go ahead and leave a comment below. If you're wondering why we didn't even talk about trying to sneak into Serbia, there are good reasons for that. Figure it out. There, it's in there. You just have to look for it. If you liked the video, please give me a like. If you want to be notified when more videos on diplomacy by me hit the web, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. And if you really enjoy what I'm doing, go ahead and hit me up on Patreon. Until next time, I'm Chris Martin, and I'll stab you soon.